Hello, hello. Today we're going to take a look at arc length again. And you've done a few examples of that, hopefully, but we're going to take a look at a slightly more complicated example um, with the arc length of a cycloid. Um, I think you've seen a cycloid already, but just in case you don't remember, a cycloid is the curve you get when you take a circle like that and then you put a point on the circle say right there and then let's say you take that circle and you roll it along the x-axis say and as you roll that circle that point goes around the circle but because the circle is moving horizontally that point starts to take a path slightly like that. It's a little hard to imagine this way by drawing it, so let me show you an animation. Here's a quick one of a circle making a cycloid. As you can see, the point goes up and down. Um, each mountain is one period, one full revolution of a circle, which would be 2 pi degrees. That'll be important later. Um, here's a slower version of a cycloid. So you can really see the path that point takes as it goes up, hits, and then keeps going. So I'll stop it there. And we want to find the arc length of that cycloid. Um, now one thing you do need to be sure of with arc length is in the definition you have to have a smooth curve. The arc length formula for the integral only works for a smooth curve, which means we can only find the arc length from here all the way to there with one integral. If we wanted to keep going for the second mound, you would have to use another integral. And so you do have to do this along a smooth curve. All right, we're going to be doing this arc length in parametric equations, of course. So we need some parametric equations for x and y. So here's the general formula for a cycloid. It is a times 1, oops, I already messed that up, not 1, theta minus sine theta and then y equals a times 1 minus cosine theta. That will trace out the curve of a cycloid. If you wonder where that comes from you can take a look at page 716 in your book. It has a proof there of where those formulas come from and one more note a is equal to the radius of your circle. So using that we're now going to find the arc length of one iteration and so that means theta is going to be going from 0 to 2 pi and we're going to do a radius of 2. So our circle is going to have a radius of 2. So our equations are going to be x equals 2 times theta minus sine theta and then y equals 2 times 1 minus cosine theta and then we're going to be going from 0 all the way up to 2 pi will give us one rotation of our circle I'd recommend right now plug that into your calculator make sure you can graph that make sure you can get a picture like that so I'd recommend pausing it and get that graph on your calculator alright so hopefully you're seeing that and if you remember our arc length formula is the integral from a to b of the square root and this looks just like the distance formula you have dx, in this case it's going to be d theta, squared plus dy, 
d theta squared d theta all together. So we've just got to plug everything in. And so first we need dx d theta. So I'll do that over here on the side. dx d theta. So the derivative of x with respect to theta, we have to take the derivative of this over here. And so let's see, we're going to have a constant rule. So the 2 is going to come out by itself times the derivative of the parentheses. The derivative of theta is 1 minus the derivative of sine is cosine theta. So we have dx d theta. Now we need dy d theta is going to be equal to, again, we pull the 2 out. It's a constant. Uh, the derivative of 1 is 0, so I don't need to write it quite yet. The derivative of negative cosine gives us positive sine. The two negatives there make a positive. All right, so now we have these. We can plug both of these into our formula for arc length. So we're going to get the integral. Oh, I know a and b. a and b are going to be from 0 to 2 pi. That will give us one revolution of the square root. All right, now I've got to put both of these in and square them. So the first one is a one, oops, not one. It is two times one minus cosine theta plus, give me a nice big square root, and then the second one is 2 sine theta squared d theta. All right, so hopefully you follow me there. Here's where you've got one of two choices. If you're allowed to use the calculator, you will plug that into your calculator, making sure you get all the parentheses correct, and then you will get 16 hopefully, if you get the parentheses correct. Um, you should probably try doing that. Make sure you can get your parentheses correct, and make sure you can get 16 as your answer. However, if this is a non-calculator part of a test, then you have to keep doing this integral by hand. I'd like to do that as an exercise. Uh, it takes a little bit, um, but here we go. So first things, we can take care of some of our squareds. Uh, you're, this 2 needs to be squared, and that 2 needs to be squared. So those will both become 4. And then you'll get 1 minus cosine theta squared plus 4 sine squared theta, still underneath the square root. still have our integral from 0 to 2 pi d theta. And let's see, I see they have a common 4. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to factor out that 4 inside the square root. And once you factor it out, you can take the square root. The square root of 4 is 2. So now there would be a 2 out here. But of course, if you have, if you have a 2 multiplying, constant rule applies, you can then pull that 2 out. And so I'm going to pull that out, and now we have 2 times the integral from 0 to 2 pi. Those constants are gone, so we're left with the square root of 1 minus cosine theta squared plus sine squared theta theta. Uh, not looking good here to do this by hand, um, but we need to expand out this polynomial. And so hopefully when you're squaring it you can do that in your head. We'll have 1 times 1, which is 1. 
uh, one times cosine, negative cosine theta, which is negative cosine theta, and then negative cosine theta back times one, which is another negative cosine theta. So that is negative two cosine thetas. And then multiply the last negative cosine times negative cosine is positive cosine squared theta. And so this will be inside our square root now. And our plus sine squared theta does have to drop down inside. We're still taking the integral from 0 to 2 pi with a 2 on the outside. All right, that actually helps us quite a bit right here. That is a very popular trig identity. Cosine squared plus sine squared is equal to 1. So add that to the 1 that we already had. So now we have 2 times the integral from 0 to 2 pi times the square root of 2 minus 2 cosine theta d theta. All right, so far it's looking pretty good, uh, but sadly we still can't do this integral because we have a square root and we have quite a bit inside the square root. And so a u substitution won't help us here. There's too much here and there's nothing outside the square root. We have to try something else. So here's where it gets a little bit dicey. Uh, there is a trig identity that helps you change that uh, radicand. Um, it's a double angle identity, even though it's kind of hidden, we don't quite have a double angle here. Uh, but we can make a double angle apply. And so I'm going to do a different property on the side here to kind of show you where this comes from. And hopefully that will make some sense. So two mi we're going to start with 2 minus 2 cosine of 2 theta. Okay. And we're going to see what does that equal. As you can see, it's very similar. Um, I added in the 2 there because a double angle in our cosine helps us with some properties. And so if you remember from trig, I'm just going to rewrite the first part. All right. Cosine of 2 theta, the double angle identity is that is 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. Okay, all right, uh, now we distribute, so you get 2 minus 2 double negatives make plus 2 sine squared theta. Uh, the 2's go away out in front, and so you're left with 2 sine squared, oops, not 2, 4. I distributed wrong. That should be a 4. 4 sine squared theta. And so I'll write that up here. 2 minus 2 sine squared. Okay. Sorry, my computer's messing up a little bit. The numbers are appearing about a second after I write them. It's really weird. Now, that is similar to what we have, but like I said, I added that 2 theta. Well, that 2 theta became a single theta. Basically, it got cut in half after using our... Hold on a second. My bad. Hopefully, you caught my mistake here. I wrote this wrong the fact that my computer is slowing way down is sort of screwing me up. It's a good thing we're almost done. Alright, I was supposed to write this for sine squared theta. Alright, so we have 
our identity here, as you can see our two theta became a single theta. And that's what's important here. And we're going to follow that same pattern. We have a single theta in our problem, which means we're going to cut it in half. It's going to become a theta over 2. And so when we rewrite this, it's going to be 2. Oops, I'm going to use it. The right color here. 2. Oh, well, because I'm using red. Can't think straight. 0 to 2 pi. And now, as you can see, our 2 minus 2 cosine theta is turning into 4 sine squared. So we have 4 sine squared theta. Still has a square root. But if you remember, our thetas got cut in half from our double angle identity over here. So 2 theta became theta. That means our theta needs to become theta over 2. All right, all of that allows us to take care of the square root because now we have a multiplication problem inside our square root. Square root of 4 is 2. The square root of sine squared is sine. The square and the square roots cancel out there. Um, I'm going to do a little fancy math here. The 4 becomes a 2, but then it's a constant, so you can bring the constant out and multiply the 2 that's already there. So we actually get 4 on the outside, integral from 0 to 2 pi of sine of theta over 2, d theta. Much simpler. Uh, we start to use a quick u substitution because we don't know the integral of sine of uh, theta over 2. We only know the sine of theta. So u is going to be theta over 2. That means du is 1 half uh, d theta. And there is no 1 half sitting right here, sadly. So when we type in sine of u du, we have this extra 1 half sitting there. How do you counteract an extra 1 half? You have to multiply by 2, so the 4 becomes an 8. Um, I changed my units into u's. And so when my units, or my limits here, are also going to change, so I'm still going from 0. If I plug in 0 to theta, 0 divided by 2 is 0. So u goes from 0. If I plug in 2 pi, 2 pi over 2 is just pi. So the new limits are 0 to pi equals 8 times. Uh, integral of sine is negative cosine of u evaluated from 0 to pi. All right, now we just got to plug in 0 and plug in pi. So we have 8 times a negative cosine of pi. Cosine of pi is negative 1, but we already have the negative. So we'll go like that. Minus, all right, now we plug in 0. And remember, it's negative cosine, so I'm going to put the negative there already. Cosine of 0 is 1. And then these negatives all become positive. So you are equaling to 8 times 2, which gives you 16. Ta-da! All right, that's a pretty big exercise in taking an integral. Um, can I scroll up here? Back to remembering a few things. Um, see, we got our answer, 16. Yay! Remember this step here? Okay, that is the extra calculus that we just learned. Um, if you have a calculator, you can just plug that in and get your answer. If not, you've got to do things by hand. Um, I understand that some of the red part here for the trig is not something you've done in a while, but it's good to see.
right, i hope that helps.